Hello friends, my name is Katie from Eternal Flame and today I am in Berlin, Germany. Um, I am traveling here for school. I'm in a graduate degree program for my executive MBA and we came here on a global study tour and we basically just wrapped up the week yesterday. Since then, I've done a ton of shopping. I actually purposely bought a carry-on, extra carry-on luggage so I can check one to bring a ton of things home for my friends and family, as well as you guys as part of this community. So today, I thought I'd share with you some of the my reflections on the week, some of the things I've purchased while I was here. And so I do apologize for the lighting and editing. I'm probably gonna be missing a lot of music and things and the quality of the video is probably not great as well because I am filming this from my iPhone. So if you're interested in seeing some of these stationary items that I picked up just today from a local shop, please stick around. Thanks everyone. All right, so we covered that basis, I guess, before we get started. I did want to take one quick moment to thank you all so very much for joining me today. As always, I very much appreciate your time and hope that if you enjoy this video, you'll let me know by giving it a thumbs up and making sure you're subscribed. All right, so today I went to a store that I don't know how to pronounce, uh, Dusman, and then all this down here. <laughs> so I do apologize, I actually purchased this bag. Um, I love the reusable bag culture here. It just seems a lot more integrated um, in New York. It feels like um, even for myself, it's been quite the struggle to um, transition from a, um, a an environment where they give you bags, plastic and paper bags at the store and remember to bring your own bags instead. Here, it seems like they're well ahead of us in the United States, with, States which I think is so interesting. We've learned so many things about the local economy here and their culture um, and really just taking time to sit down and reflect on the differences between the United States and this part of Europe has been quite interesting. And I look forward to actually writing those thoughts down in a journal. Um, I actually did buy a journal today. So what I'm going to show you today from this store that I just visited is only part of my haul. Um, like I said, I've done a ton of shopping. So if you're interested, please uh, check out some of my other videos to come. What I have set aside is anything that I haven't actually packed away. What I'm going to share with you is not only the items that I purchased, but also the price that I paid. Right now is a very interesting time in history where the euro, uh, which is typically stronger than the US dollar, is actually pretty much one to one, um, which was very exciting for me. And I'm not very well traveled, I'll be very honest with you. And so this is the first time I'm purchasing things in a foreign country and then going through like this duty-free um, thing. So one tip I have for you that my friends shared with me is to make sure that when you're making larger purchases, um, I don't make very large purchases, but for example, I had to buy a Samsonite carry-on, uh, which was over a hundred dollars. So I thought it was worth it. I asked for a, um, I guess tax form and so they print out an extra receipt that you ideally i've heard you take to the airport and fill out a form so that they refund you the taxes that are built into the prices so i'm sorry if this is very basic for some of you that are already abroad or well traveled but for me as someone who was not very um i guess educated in that i'm trying to break it down as simple as possible as possible so in germany they have the euro um, like I said, it's one to one and apparently uh, built in into the price is about 11% tax. And so that amount will be somehow refunded to you at the airport if done correctly. Don't know how. Okay, so show up early to the airport. Um, okay, so that's one thing and let's get right into it. So I'm going to start off with the non-stationary items, uh, which is not a lot that I have handy. I did buy a lot of non-stationary items, um, but the one thing I really love, I bought this for my husband and I'm so sorry, sweetie heart, if you see this before I get home. Um, but I got him a mug. I actually don't know how much this was. What I loved about this mug is not only the aesthetic, so I am going to tell you more about this when I get home and I upload some of my vlogging footage, but I'm absolutely in love with this guy they call Ambulmanchen. I don't know if it's one word. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but essentially um, my limited knowledge of it uh, when speaking to locals is that Ambulmanchen is not only something very special, I think, to tourists, that's very popular with tourists, but it's also special to locals in Berlin because it is a um, 
symbolic of the reunification, so very historical. After re the East and West reunified, um, there was a lot of work and design work and things um, put into compromising with the option now of choosing uh, these pedestrian signals, um, which is very, very close to my heart because I used to, in a past life, as a civil engineer, design signals and intersections. And I have never in my life, in my not very well-traveled life, seen pedestrian signals that are so fun. Um, so the, immediately when I arrived in Berlin, that was the first thing that caught my eye. And it turns out that tourists love it and it's something that's very special here. And they have six stores so far, um, so I've been told, that are dedicated just to this Ampelmännchen. So, of course, in red and green, you'll see this is the stop, stop signal for pedestrians. And there's a ghost signal here somewhere as well, this little man here. And they have top hats. And I, I believe in my understanding is that part of it is really because it brings joy to people. Um, so I thought that was so sweet. And then also the historic factor, if you're interested in looking into that, I would definitely not take my word for it and look into the history here about that as well. But I do have footage of that store. It's so cute. I bought so many things in addition to this little mug. So I will just give you a quick close-up of it. I love it because it's actually metal, so I don't have to worry about ceramics breaking. It says Berlin here, and it has a lot of the, uh, you know, touristy things like the gate here, uh, the buses, the, this is the traffic signal, as you can see, it's stop and go. And of course, as I mentioned, it, my understanding is that it's optional, so they can go with the very basic uh, pedestrian signal or this very fun one. And um, yeah, and then beer, of course. <laughs> I'm not sure what this is, but I would say probably the equivalent of the United States White House, but someone can correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, yeah, so absolutely love this. This is for my husband. And I actually don't know how much it was because it is not um, on here. But Ampelmann, that's how you spell it. And it's the original Ampelmann. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna move on to this store, Dusman. And um, I have so much footage of this massive store. I'll be quite honest with you. I spent probably over an hour in the fountain pen stationary sec section. I was very fixated on trying to get German made um, fountain pens and ink while I was here. So I did succeed. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I succeeded very well. I over exceeded <laughs> expectations and bought three. Uh, one is for my friend, so Carly, if you're watching, please like skip to a different video. <laughs> um, but yes, and I got a couple for myself as well. Um, yeah, so we are kind of twinsies, and I don't really know. I bought a bunch of Airbin, um ink as well that I won't be showing today. I bought little ones. I actually bought two of each so that my friend Carly can have a set as well and matching fountain pens. So I got two. I had my eye in DC at Jenny Bick on this fountain pen here by Faber Castell um, that is German made. Um, I What I love to do is to ask the locals, um, especially like stores associates, um, in their experience what their favorite pens are. Um, I will be very honest, the guy was so sweet um, at this store. He literally probably stood there with me for an hour and he was so patient. He was like, no rush. He was smiles and giggles. It was the greatest time probably of my time here. Uh, that's saying a lot, um, but I actually, oh gosh, I don't remember how much this was. I think it was 45 each. I got one in black for myself, matte black, and then this beautiful like matte silver color for my friend Carly. And uh, so she is very com comfortable. Like her handwriting is gorgeous and she writes a little larger so i think she prefers like the larger nibs the wider nibs which i learned today that in germany so i think i kind of knew this that german um so fountain pens from the asian countries like japan tend to be a lot finer so if you take like the ef nib i hear from like a japan based company's fountain pen it can be uh, what some people say is scratchy, but I say is amazing. Uh, so I also write very small and therefore I always get EF nibs. So I got an EF nib here, um, but it is, I believe, still broader than um, some of my other 
Japan based pens like my Pilot Vanishing Point. I think that one's from Japan is definitely a lot finer in the EF nib than the Faber Castell and also Quebeco. So yes, I got us both uh, one each and I tried to get converters, but apparently because they're so popular, they run out pretty quickly. So this has just the regular cartridge, which is fine. That's actually probably easier for us. So 45 each for these and making sure that you get that tax form on your way out. So my next very exciting thing, uh, you know what, I'll save this one for last because it was a very large purchase and I think you all will really like that. Um, so the next thing is my fountain ink. So as I mentioned, I bought four mini urban uh, fountain inks of two different colors. They were absolutely gorgeous and I'm going to give two to my friend Carly and then test them out when I get home. But I also bought Caveco fountain ink, which I never thought to myself to get Caveco fountain ink. Um, and I'm hopeful that it'll be well used. <laughs> um, and I, I'm always reluctant to buy too much. But anyways, long story short, I got Midnight Blue and Sunshine Orange. How fun are those names? Uh, so this is, these are the two colors. I apologize if it's not true to the color. These were seven something, seven, they don't have it down here, 745 or something, not, not more than eight euro. And if I say dollars, I'm so, sorry. Um, but yeah, so this is more of like a gray and then a sunshine orange. Very excited to try these out. Very excited that they're Caveco. Um, they're actually made in Austria, you'll see, uh, but you know, they're, everything is, I guess, designed in Germany. Um, so, and he actually taught me, the sales associate while I was there, so sweet. He taught me that like Caveco is actually taking the name of the three co-founders, I guess, and squishing it together. So there's three people that came together and created this brand. And then, so if you take like the first two letters or something of each of their names, it spells out Caveco, which I think is so amazing and something uh, that was so cool. And I, I asked him too, I was like, how did you know that? He's like, oh, I just Googled it. So definitely Google it and check me, but very cool. Shows you how sweet he was. All right, so very lastly, these most exciting items, uh, least exciting is the converter for the my Caveco pen that I'm about to show you. Um, that he actually even just put it in to make sure that it fits. So you'll notice here it's much it's, it's much larger than the mini, the Caveco mini converter, which uh, makes sense because this is not a mini pen. So I almost bought a Caveco Sport in like this pearlescent one that I wanted to get. I will say the price of the Caveco Sport here um, was the same as in the United States on Amazon. Uh, so I decided to leave that one behind because I can probably get that on Chuppens or on Amazon in the US. And then instead, I bought <laughs> this Caveco Special. I'm gonna say special, so I don't make a fool of myself. Caveco Special. And the reason I got it was because, okay. So he told me his favorite was Lamy and Caveco from German brands. So as a child, he used to use Lamy and then he now uses Caveco, I think. Um, and he said that the Faber-Castell Faber is similar in quality to the Caveco, um, but he likes the Caveco more because they're broader. And the reason I actually purchased these was that they're a lot thinner. I have very, very tiny hands, if you haven't noticed. So I enjoy the very sleek design of these brands. Um, so that's what I got here. It's a full size. Like I said, the converter came with it. This was 76.50 euro, so 76 0.15 I guess or dash one time so it's quite pricey it comes with it should come with ink I don't know if it's in here Ugh. I actually don't hear it um and he was so so freaking sweet oh yes okay oh my goodness Ooh. um so he was explaining to me that a lot of people sometimes take this to figure out which uh refill that they need like the sizing and then so it comes with one in here so let's see if I could get this to close because my friend and I were kind of like playing around uh, and couldn't get it to close. So he actually very sweetly found a, what they call a feather here, I guess, I guess a nib um, in EF. It was the last one. So he was explaining to me that medium is probably the most popular here in uh, Germany. And so I got the last EF, he swapped it out for me and I didn't have to pay extra because otherwise I would have had to do that myself. Um, so I think he had mercy on me and I love that it's in gold. I know it doesn't match the lid, uh, but that is absolutely okay. So I'm very excited to test it out when I get home or maybe even here, but I don't really want to mess it up here. Oh my goodness, his hands were so inky. It is a twist off. His um, hands were so inky and I felt so bad. I kept apologizing. He was like, 
you're fine. And then also to come, okay, so I'm gonna tell you more things to come. So I told you about this notebook, it's called Silicon, I think is the company, the brand. And this woman was there promoting it. It was so sweet. Um, they're like a linen fabric colored uh, notebook. I got an A5 size and it was like a hundred and something pages. It's quite thick. Uh, it came out to maybe like 26 euro. And because of the promo, oh, I forgot. I didn't get the photo corners, but that's okay. What she did for me instead, which was included in that pricing after I purchased the item. So she's just sitting there and she's kind of like making little books and things. And she was so sweet to extend it. She was like, eight characters would be best, but I wanted to put eternal flame on the cover. She's so sweet. She made recommendations on the colors. So we did it in like a gold foil. It said eternal flame on like this very light. I knew this was going to happen because I got a light covered colored cover. It was like blue. Um, but anyways, this video is getting way too long. <laughs> so that is to come. She was so very sweet. She was telling me about her brand or their brand. The company was designed in Germany and they were just at like some kind of market in France. So that is where I'm supposed to head next. Right now is a weird time. They're going through air traffic control strikes. So I'm not sure if I'm going to make it back to the US <laughs> uh, or if I do, how I'm going to get there because I'm looking to change my flight. Long story short, the last item I wanted to share with you today is also a stationary item that I'm absolutely in love with. I randomly got this I believe leather, hopefully genuine leather, um, a fountain pen case. This was 72 euro, as you can see here. This one actually has the price on it. It's very soft and um, I'll just open it up for you. It has a little zipper here that goes um, around the case and this little elastic and also something in here. I don't know what that says. So maybe you guys know better than I. So it has this little loop to put it in here. So I'm very excited for this. I think it's going to go very well with my new Hobonichi planners. So um, with that, I will probably wrap up this video. And I already thanked you so very much for your time. I want to share with you though, what is to come next. So before I left on September 1st, on the day that Hobonichi came out with their 2023 planners, I actually, for the very first time, placed an order from Japan on the 1101 site and it arrived while I was gone. So to come, uh, in a, just a few short days when I get back to the U.S., I'm going to do an unboxing so I can share with you all not only the items that I purchased for my friends and family and things, my husband as well, who is absolutely hooked with Hobonichi as well, um, but all of the items that I, some of the items, I guess, because I probably will expand the items that I plan to use in my 2023 Hobonichi planner setup. I have other stationary items that have been gifted to me as well as that I've purchased and all of the things, including clothing and outfits of the day. So if you're interested in seeing that, of course, please make sure that you are subscribed and you hit that little notification bell down below. Thank you so much. And until next time, bye everyone.